Our passion didn't start with the mouth. It started with people, with the well-being of the profession. And if you're like me, maybe a little bit of your nerdiness in all things tech too. We all want to love what we do, but the truth is burnout, people problems, and glass ceilings can keep us from doing what we set out to do. So let's get back to the heart of connection. Welcome to the Dental Handoff. This show is about passing you the knowledge, the habits, the systems, and the strategies to lead your teams, lean on the tech, and listen to your gut while you take care of teeth. And let's get honest, the overall health of our communities. Let's stop using the wrong end of the toothbrush, y'all. My name is Dr. Kelly Tanner. Oh, and uniquely, I'm a dental hygienist, too. You can consider me a guru in the dental and leadership industry. With over three decades of experience, my goal is to take you to the next level by empowering growth, perspective, and confidence. By identifying the gaps, recognizing the plaque, and extracting the truth with other experts in the field. I'll share their stories, empower you to own yours, and elevate your passion in the process. So have a seat in the chair, put on your bib, and let's get to work. Welcome, welcome to the dental handoff, you guys. I am so thrilled to have with me today the Dr. Chad Duplantis. I am your hostess, Dr. Kelly Tanner, RDH, and I had to beg Chad to be on here with me today. He and I run across a lot of the same circles with speaking and engaging audiences and promoting what we love to do with uh, technology and connecting with our patients. Chad, such an honor to have you on our show today. Well, it's an honor to be here. And actually, um, I'll just set the record straight. You didn't have to beg me. I was kind of ashamed that you hadn't asked me sooner. No, I'm teasing you. But I, I, it's an honor to be here. So thank you so much for having me. So Yeah, thank you. And Chad's, uh, he's seeing patients today. So you'll see that he he has his name on so he knows who he is all day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I, I do have a tendency to forget that. I do have a tendency to forget <laughs> And so that. your team knows who you are, you know. Exactly. All the things. So um, Chad, I always start with, you know, tell us about your your pursuit of dentistry and how dentistry chose you a little bit about your story and your why to start us off yeah so um i am maybe a little bit different uh i realized that i wanted to be a dentist i think uh, when i was a junior in high school and so uh, i was taking this class at school, I knew for a long time that I wanted to be in the medical field. And then I thought that I wanted to be a psychiatrist or a psychologist. And then I realized that I had to be somewhat crazy to be able to do that too. And so, although I'm crazy, um, I started thinking, I'm like, man, I don't know if I want to go to college and then medical school and then do a residency and all that stuff. I'm like, that's just a lot of school. So throughout this health occupations class, we got to go through a bunch of um, different offices and whatnot. And uh, I said, have we ever done a dental office? And they're like, no, we haven't. And they're like, but would you like to do that? So I said, sure. So uh, I, they connected me with this, this lady dentist in, in uh, Plano, Texas, who is still uh, a big, I'm a big fan of hers. And uh, her name's Becky Matthews Cloetta. And so I worked in Becky's office as a quote unquote intern and I ended up working there for a job and I came back, you know, throughout college and we worked there over Christmas break and the summers and whatnot and just really got to see a person that loved their job, loved what they did, got to engage with people. Oh, and she only worked four days a week. And I was like, Hey, this is like firing on all cylinders. And it's only four years after college. And um, and it, it really just just kind of hit home. And that's what I like. Do I like dentistry? I love dentistry. I, I love what I do. But do I like the connection with people? And it's an astounding yes. And that's that's where I think dentistry means so much to me is that we get to know these people. You know, my business partner always says <clears throat> we treat people from birth at all ages, from birth to death. And it's it's just, it's been a beautiful thing to watch people grow up and see them have their own families and, you know, progress through the various stages of life and being there with them, you know, along the way is kind of fun and being able to treat their dental health as, is an added bonus. Yeah. So are you, 
when you're practicing at work, I know that you, you're still practicing full-time, part-time. I practice four days a week. Okay. So, so full-time. Um, full-time. Yep. Yep. So, um, but with that being said, it's kind of funny. Uh, the first few years of my career, you know, patients used to give you a hard time. They're like, oh, you know, you've got banker's hours. You work four days a week and this and that. And to be honest with you, it was kind of true. I mean, I would I would practice four days, play golf, ride bikes, do fun stuff on the fifth day and really kind of disconnect from dentistry a little bit. But as time went on and I started lecturing and speaking and stuff, it, it's really a seven day work week. I mean, as you can relate, you know, I mean, those those Fridays that I have off are often gobbled up with lecturing, you know, traveling the rubber chicken circuit, as some of my salespeople um, call it, just because it seems like every lunch you have has a piece of rubbery chicken with it, um, or writing articles or preparing for the next lecture. So uh, I, I don't know where the four day work week went. But now I take a little bit of offense when they say, Oh, you're not here on Fridays, you're, you're you know, so it's kind of funny. But yeah, so I, I do work several days, but full time in the practice. And then you're doing, you're seeing all family members. Are you seeing pediatric as well as, you know, the, as a full family practice? Great question. You know, it's as time goes on in your career, you'll find what you really love and, and what you, you really don't. Um, and I love kids and we treat kids, but if they have a lot of work that needs to be done that we find in that initial exam, I'll probably refer them because I want them to always like me. And so right, I know right. that sometimes those first few restorative visits can be a little bit tough. So if there's a lot going on, I have, I have a bunch of really good pediatric dentists that I work with, but I do treat all ages. Um, and I just, I, I would say that I limit the procedures that I, that mm -hmm. I do to a certain extent. So so here you are, you're going back to the day you decided that you wanted to be a dentist. You're thinking that you got to connect with people all the time. That's a four day work week. So looking back on the assumptions that you made, does it live up to what you thought it was going to be? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. And you know, uh, uh, a, a little confession, like one day last week, um, you can learn a lot about yourself through your own personalities and mood swings or whatnot. And one day last week, or it was a couple of weeks ago, I was having kind of a, kind of a rough day and uh, really a rough week for, to, uh, to be quite honest. And I saw this one patient and it was kind of like really quick, oh, this is what we need to do. And this is why we need to do it. And let's have you back next week and let's do it. And, um, and, and, you know, the patient came in the next week and they said, what, what was wrong with you last week? And I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, you weren't yourself. And so, you know, you, you start thinking back and you're like, oh my gosh. And so I go back and I look at the schedule. And I'm like, yeah, that day was crazy. And I apologize, but you wear it on your shoulders because you, you try and be that, that hero that's always kind of ramped up and amped up and try and get them through it. And, and they, they notice when you're having a bad day. So has it lived up to everything that I thought it would be? The answer is absolutely. But even the days that it doesn't, you, you gotta, you gotta kind of, you know, work through it because yeah. the patients are going to notice when you're having your bad days. And they do. Do you, do you have like a, I know some offices kind of like have a, a secret language or like a, you know, yeah. like the fix your face kind of thing, like to nudge you to be, to make you more aware of, Hey, Dr. Duplantis, no snap out of it or Kelly snap out of it. Come back to us. Yeah. If you're, if you're really focused on something or you're thinking about the 10 next things that are going to happen, do you have a language yeah. like that in your practice? Um, uh, I, I think it's all through body expression. Um, I, I, my, um, we have one employee that's been with us maybe three years, but everybody else has been here for greater than 10 years. Uh, some of them even 20 plus. Wow. And so um, we know each other very, very well. Um, it, we work in a, a Dr. Kirkham and I, and then the rest of our staff is female. And so I always joke that I, I have one wife at home and I have nine at work <laughs> and, um, and they, they all, they all know me pretty well, but they, they, we, we know how to rally each other and, and through body expression, I can see when, when, when we're having a down day and when we're having an up day, but it's really funny that those Thursdays with big weekends ahead, 
those are always pretty positive days. Yeah, but yeah, yeah it's pretty always positive days. Hey. Yeah, yeah. This Thursday, I have to jump on a flight at 5 a.m. on Friday morning. So that may not be a rally day because you know that you're only going to get like four or five hours of sleep on Thursday night. So. Oh, for sure. And yeah. and it sounds like you've had your team in place for a while. So what are what are your um, special secrets of keeping your team happy and engaged and uh, loving on you and your patients and all the things that you bring in and you're changing? Because I know you're extremely innovative. Yeah. So, you know... Um, I, we've, I think that the biggest answer is that we've never chased the almighty dollar. Mm. And, you know, um, do we have goals? Of course we have goals, but um, we're, we're, we're going to understand that, that they're not going to be met every single day. And, and, and we've always had this attitude, well, we didn't hit it today, but you know what? We got tomorrow to hit it. We've got tomorrow to hit it. We've got next week to hit it. You know, I, I treat everything, um, kind of as a month at a time versus as a day at a time. And I find that it works a little bit better. Um, and, and then that, that transcends. And I think the other thing is, is that uh, we're a very compassionate office. My business mm -hmm. partner always says that uh, our patients don't know the difference between a molar and a Maserati, but they'll sure, sure know the way that they were treated while they were here. And so we treat everybody like a family member and that, that extends to our employees as well. Um, been in this practice for 20 years now. And I would say that uh, I've only had one employee that left disgruntled. Wow. And um, in the end, when I looked at it, what it was is that somebody else hung the almighty dollar in front of her head and she chased the almighty dollar. And since she's left our office, she's been through several different dental practices. And, um, and I, I don't think anybody would have been able to make that person happy, but everybody else, it's, it's like, it's, it's a tear fest when they leave, you know, we've, we've had one position that that's had a little bit of turnover, but it's always because somebody's going to school uh, or somebody graduated from school mm -hmm. or, or somebody's changing careers. You know, we just don't have people that, that leave disgruntled. And I think it's just because of the family atmosphere that we have, you know, and yeah. uh, it works. So do you think that some of this, I mean, it sounds like you don't have to really go through the hiring process that much. Do you feel like that some of knowing and choosing these, these right folks sort of have these indicators? I asked this question a few weeks ago to another one of our guests. Do you feel like you're, that you can spot them and say, yeah. And then if you can, what is that it factor for you? You know, I, I think it's, it's, it's all a, uh, I think the biggest question is, are they personable? Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two is, is are they trainable? Mm -hmm. That's number two. Um, number three is, 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 are they qualified? Because the majority of the positions in our office, I don't have a problem getting them the training that they need in order to succeed at that position. So that's where number two comes into play. There are a handful of positions, i.e. hygiene and dentists, that they definitely need the certifications prior right, to. Right, right, But, you know, um, personality is 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 going to be the it factor. That's the biggest thing. They've got to fit in. And, and, you know, when it comes to a, let's say, a hygienist per se, the certifications always got to be the first question. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, are they certified? <laughs> and then And then are they personable and are they trainable? But for the majority of the positions, personable, trainable, and 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 I think that we can accomplish a lot in those. You know, we we have um, even for dental assistants. Of course, you want somebody that's qualified, but I I would go after somebody and pay for the qualifications uh, if I needed to. Uh, not necessarily for a lead assistant, but for a second or a third assistant in our practice, I would definitely go through paying for you know getting that person up to speed if they were personable and trainable. Yeah, that's, that's unique. And I, I find that a lot of the, a lot of the docs who keep their teams in place, they're willing to do that. They're willing to invest in those team members because they mm -hmm. saw the it factor. Those folks have, um, they provided value to the patients, to the practice, encouraging to everyone. And they, you, they've seen that growth in them and they can see the value in that team member. And so they've invested in them, which then it just creates this cycle 
of where yeah. everyone's invested in the practice. And the patients recognize that. They recognize turnover. They recognize when we're they in sure a bad do. mood, if we don't want to use technology that we've just acquired and we're mad about something doesn't work, <laughs> they recognize all yeah. those little things. Been there. So it's a matter of, um, of, of all those little things, treating them like family, also investing in them, investing in yourself, yourself. And I think too, what I've heard from a lot of guests and just knowing and being in the industry is just being honest with yourself about when you do need help and support to say, okay, what are my blind spots here mm -hmm. in this particular area? How can we grow beyond where we are? Because we may be having an issue here, a growth opportunity is what I call it. But it sounds like you're you're able to do all the things that you're that you love. You're able to care for your patients. You're able to speak. What? How often do you speak? And what are the topics that you speak on? Well, you kind of caught me at a bad time uh, because it it's uh, as a speaker. I think that uh, I, I'll I'll just give you an example. One one of the one of my really good friends is a very very knowledgeable endodontist. So I was like, you need to start speaking. And, and so the biggest piece of advice that I gave him is that as a speaker, the one trait that you really need is you need the ability to say no. And that was the hardest thing for me with speaking in the beginning is that I would say yes, 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 yes. And, and now I start to say no a lot more. But as, as we talk about this, how often do I speak? You know, um, I would say about 20 times a year on average. A couple of years ago, it was a lot more, but it's because mm -hmm. I've been able to say no, that I've been able to diminish that to a certain extent. Um, but right now the bad stretch is, is I think I was trying to figure it out last week. We were talking, I think you and I were talking last night. I think I'm in the middle of like a, a, a six or seven out of eight week stretch. I'm losing track. Um, and, and there was like, there was like one, there were, it was going to be like, let's say six out of eight weeks. And then there was like one opportunity that I really, really wanted that they're like, Hey, can you do this date? And I'm like, sure. So now it's just increased. I'd have to do the math again, but it seems like I've been going it, the start of it was when I saw you in mid April and the end of it is going to be June 17th. And then I have about a month off and I'm like, oh. You know? Yeah, yeah, and, and so get to sleep uh, in your own bed again. Yeah, so it's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like like uh, this weekend, I was trying to think when when is the next time that I'm actually going to be able to sleep in? And sleeping in for me is like maybe seven thirty. And I looked at the schedule. And I was like, oh, Monday's Memorial Day, and I'll be home on Sunday. I'm like, yes, I can sleep. So uh, so yeah, it's it's quite a bit right now, but that's not always the case. Yeah. So how, what is your? Do you typically oh, topics? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and topics. Yeah. yeah. And, oh. Do I typically what now? I was going to say, so typically I was just thinking about this and like the dynamic too. And then we'll talk about topics. You know, you're running a practice, you're, I mean, you're doing all of that and then you're speaking. How does your team handle emergencies? Like what does all that look like? Or, or, you know, get your I, schedule straight. I, I'm very fortunate. Sorry. I'm going to turn my phone on silent because um, you're not going to answer it online live. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> it's a great day at Fossil Creek Dental. Um, so I got to figure out where that button is. Yeah, don't um, touch the phone. We don't like Dennis to touch my, the phone. You know this. My team has been very, very supportive of, of my speaking. They've been, um, actually, they have a great sense of pride, you know, that, that I'm able to do that. But they've seen a transformation in me that's good, and it's also detrimental. And the good is, is that, I feel that I've become a better communicator. I feel that I've become a better educator. Um, but the detrimental side is, is we're always trying something new in the practice. Uh, and it's like, yeah. you know, when a dentist goes to a CE course and they come back and they want to change everything that they do. The good news is I don't necessarily want to change everything that we do, but it's just like, oh my gosh, we got to try this out for a few weeks and we may never see it again. And so that, that becomes a little bit like, they're like, they do roll their eyes a little bit when I come out with a new product. And there are certain things that I get that I just flat out won't try because I know it's not going to fit into my office. As far as handling emergencies, it's very rare that I have to worry about that because my business partner, I, I'm fortunate that I have a business partner, someone in the practice that if he's gone, I'm usually here. If I'm gone, he's usually here. 
But what we did like this past weekend, per se, my business partner's on his 40th anniversary trip. I had a speaking engagement that was scheduled two years ago that I had to go to this past weekend. And everybody in our office knows all of our patients. So I gave uh, on the answer machine, we turned it over to our hygienist uh, who answered the calls for the weekend. Oh, cool. Um, yes, she'll get a little bit of a bump, but uh, I, you know, she, she knew how clinically to handle that. Um, and then in a dire emergency, of course, she's going to call me first. Right. Uh, Because I'm like, don't call Dr. Kirkham. He's on his 40th anniversary trip with his wife. And I don't want to upset that. She'll call me first. And then I had another local doctor that was prepared just for a pre-screened true dental emergency. So, yeah, that's cool. And it's good that your team is supporting you because I, I, I've always seen the teams where when you mentioned too, that you bring the product back or the device back or the technology back from a CE and the team's going, Mm -hmm. what do we do with this? How right. do we work this into what we're doing? So how do you how do you do that if it's something that you find that you love and you work it into your workflow? Like, where do you start with that? Well, I went against my cardinal rule uh, about a month ago. And uh, my cardinal rule, and I think you, you probably saw this when we were together in April, but I feel that technology, and I'm glad you asked, I'm, I'm going to focus on technology for a second, but I think that everything that you implement in your practice needs to be systematic, needs to be methodical, and it needs to be understood. Obviously understood by you as the practitioner, but it needs to be understood by your team as well. And if it's not, it's going to fail. I promise you it's going to fail. And I've had a lot of technology and just various implementations in our office that have failed. I mean, I could go through a long list of things that have failed just because of the way that we implemented them. Well, a couple of weeks ago, we decided to transition and switch our practice management software, which, as we all know, is a nightmare. OK, I don't care who you're switching to. I don't care what you're switching from. You're moving somebody's cheese. You're moving a lot of people's cheese and it's going to be a nightmare. So you got to really, really digest that one. Well, we also utilize CBCT in the practice. And so what I also did is I engaged with a company that I'm, I'm really excited about that is going to read all of our CBCTs because I think liability is something that we expose all of ourselves to when we incorporate technology that has such a large field of view. So I added both of those things and it was about at the same time. And the CBCT thing, as it, it's like plug and play. And like, for instance, We sent off six CBCTs within the past week. We got all of our readings back today. So it's really just me going through the readings from the radiologist and putting it in the patient's chart, which I'm happy to do so because that way I know that it didn't just get passed by me. I'll read it, copy and paste it. It's in the patient's clinical notes, whatever. But I realized that my front team was extremely overwhelmed. I'm walking out of the office about 5.15 last week And I got this question and it was like, it was a very valid question. It was about billing for the CBCT, but it also had to do with the practice management software and the way that it was presented to me, I was like, oh my gosh, you know? So as I'm walking out, I think I was going to one of my daughter's performances or whatever. I just dropped everything that I had in my hands and I sat down and I said, look, this is on me. I didn't explain this to you appropriately. I said, I threw two things at you at once that are one's a really big thing and one shouldn't be, but you're, you're overthinking this. So let's just stop. Let's just take a back seat and know that the training is going to come with the practice management software and any training that's, that's there for the CBCT software. We'll, we'll baby step that and we'll get into that a little bit further down the road. And I said, just let it do its thing for now. I'll handle that. You all hand it, handle the practice management software. Once we get that, then we'll take step two with the CBCT software, which is going to be medical billing and, yeah, and right. radiological interpretation charging. And they said, well, well, how do we charge for that right now? I said, just don't. Let's just let's just worry about getting it into place right now. Let's worry about the billing of it later. Let's get the practice management software under control and go from there. We'll build the same way we've been billing before until we get this under control. And so it, I went against my cardinal rule, but it's going to work out. Um, but I just, I just realized how overwhelmed they were. And, and that was all on me for just fighting off too much all at once. Well, it's good that you recognized it though. And that you stopped and you took that time and you acknowledged that, that, and you just said, you know, listen, this isn't, you know, this isn't the way we typically operate. 
And you yeah. probably validated how they were feeling. They then took a breath and then they knew yeah. that they could move forward and to, um, you know, take action. Looks like we have a, um, a question from our viewer, which PMS do you prefer? Oh, that's a, I, well, I, I, I wish I could answer that right now, but um, to answer your question, uh, we are switching from Dentrix to Curve, and uh, I'm very, very excited, as is the entire team. We're very excited about the functionality of Curve. Dr. Kirkham and I are very excited about the cloud-based aspect of Curve, but um, the reason I say which, which one do I prefer is because I, I got to get in and start using it first. I, I'm almost positive I'm going to prefer it. Um, you know, I looked into several. Uh, I liked what they had to say. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and that's no strike against Curve whatsoever. It's just you know, right. we're overwhelmed right now. So yeah, you haven't to, you haven't got a yeah. chance to get in your flow yet. And yeah. so he was saying that he um, recommends uh, Open Dental. But um, yeah. and then also I know that Dental Ray is the is the medical, I think that's the company that you're using for that, yeah. which is the phenomenal service to, to the patients and to you. A hundred percent. Yeah, it's great. So. so, and then tell me just briefly about like top five topics you talk about, because I know that you talk about a lot and that you, you're an expert in many things. So top five. Uh, implants for the restorative dentist. Uh, that that's probably not number one. Number one is digital technology. I mean, you know that. I mean, I, I love digital technology. I love just integrating technology into the office. So that's number one. Number two would be implants for the restorative dentist. Uh, number three would be uh, uh, cements and adhesion because mm -hmm. I really like that. And then I do various other restorative topics such as impressioning, different uh, new technology that's been created uh, in the restorative platforms. Um, and then CBCT. I do like talking about integrating CBCT. That goes hand in hand with technology, but it's kind of got to be a separate topic as well. Um, we talked about this again last month, but I'll tell you uh, a real quick funny story. Um, I was asked to speak to a group of endodontists and I was, I don't even do endo. I'm like, what do you <laughs> want me to speak about? You know, well, they wanted me to speak about restorative technology but there was another doctor that was at this symposium that was already speaking about restorative technology, you know, that could benefit the, the endodontist. So I did a lecture this past weekend and it was really on improving the relationship between the general dentist and in this case, the endodontist, but really any specialist. And, um, and, and so we, we did that presentation and I would say that it, it was the most gratifying presentation I've ever given. It was so much fun. And I think it was, it, it was something that really needed to be heard and uh, somebody goes, goes, when are you speaking on this again? And I go, I have no idea. And they go, well, where else have you done this? Because, you know, the, the industry needs to hear this. And I'm like, that was a first. That was a one and hopefully not done. But it, it was it was well received. So I guess maybe the power in the art of communication amongst dental team members is, is something that I might start pursuing because I really enjoyed writing that lecture and also giving it. Yeah, it, there's always the first time, right, for every lecture, and people go, "Oh, it looks like that you've done that hundreds of times." It's like, nope, that was yeah. first. Yep, that was it. <laughs> That's that how you it. know you're winning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hashtag winning. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly. That's awesome. And I know Chad that you all have your Wednesday live with dentists in the know as well. The D, the Dinks, and uh, you want to talk just for a moment about that? Yeah. So. Uh... Wednesdays, we have, well, we have a Facebook group called Dentist in the Know. Uh, we're young, um, you know, as far as uh, social media groups are concerned, we're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, website is being developed as we speak. But um, every Wednesday night, we have a hump day happy hour. And the hump day happy hour is, is really fun. We always bring an industry leader on. Dr. Tanner's been on. Uh, industry leader, lecturer, expert. Tonight is Dr. Tom Viola, pharmacologist. Um, and so we just try to bring value to our profession and we really try to promote dental education. Uh, and just the flip side is, is I don't feel that we're very self-promoting because mm -hmm. um, we try and promote other people's educational opportunities rather than ours. Uh, and, and it's been a lot of fun. It really is something that I look forward to every Wednesday. They have a blast. Uh, Dr. Bell, Jen of her, she 
talks about the news. And then I always joke, I'm like, I don't know what, what, what the other, what the guys do really. So no, <laughs> I, you know, yeah. I say that lovingly. No, you guys, it's, it, it's truly valuable information and it's um, they bring a guest on and it's answering questions and then opportunity for other people in the audience to, to interact. And so I love that about being on that, on your show and you, you guys are gaining members like yeah. every week. It's just like growing and growing. And I just, I commend you all for, because every Wednesday live for an hour is yeah. a lot to commit to with families and traveling and speaking and seeing patients. So, um, it's fun. yeah. So Dr. Duplantis, how can people find you? How can they get in touch uh, with you? Real easily, Dr. Duplantis, Dr. Duplantis at gmail.com. Uh, and that's D-U-P-L-A-N-T-I-S is the last name, uh, as you can see right there. <laughs> um, and uh, you find me on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, uh, I'm easy to be found. Website for the practice is fossil, fossilcreekdental.com. But I'm happy to connect with anybody that may have questions. Yeah. Thank you. Any final words you'd like to offer our audience? Any sage words of advice or any, any insight? I think my biggest piece of advice would be never bite off more than you can chew. And, mm -hmm. and I think that that holds a lot of value in running a dental practice. And so, you know, just remember that systematic, methodical and understood approach and really try and work with your teams so that they understand not only what you're integrating, but why you're doing so. Mm -hmm. And the why is the most important part. Yeah. hundred percent. Cause then there's buy-in and then there's value yeah. created all the way around it. And then your team will be like, yes, this is why we're doing this. And they get really pumped up every other day of the week. Exactly. So, well, thank you so much for your time today. It's just, it, it always flies by. I appreciate you being here with us. Um, you all, please feel free to reach out to Dr. Duplantis. He is a wealth of knowledge on everything, technology, restorative, adhesives, um, dentists in the know, and he gives his cell phone number out too sometimes too, if you're in the right place at the right time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't mind. Yeah. So if, if you need me, you can find me. <laughs> yeah, you certainly can. But if you all are, join, are joining us or just joining us, watching us, the dental handoff, we're on here every week where we would love for you to give us a five-star rating on Apple. You can listen to us on all of the Apple podcasts, Spotify, any of the, all the things, and then also on YouTube. We appreciate your allegiance and your loyalty and everyone have a great day. Go crush it and make a difference. Thanks, Chad. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs>